Hello everybody, the Nameless Narcissist here once again, a simple man diagnosed with NPD, giving you the facts on narcissistic personality disorder and things that go on in my head. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, but keep in mind, I am no clinician, I can only speak to my own experiences. So, I had an interesting thought the other day, because I have never understood like the super entitled narcissist, right? The ones that will like cut in line because they believe that they deserve to or stuff like that. And like, that's such a stereotypical example, isn't it? Uh, it's even mentioned in Eleanor uh, Greenberg's book. Apparently, they'll feel a lot of shame about it afterwards and be like, oh my god, I acted so ridiculously, which that part I understand. Um, but like that entitlement, the bombast uh, narcissism, stuff like that, I never understood. And like for a long time, I was kind of like, ah, eh, those probably aren't narcissists, they're probably just assholes. Probably just rude people, right? Karens of the world. And I mean, hell, like when I, I remember once I was with a friend, and well, a couple friends, and we didn't want, and for some reason, they, like, something to do with COVID, they were like, no, we can't go now, like, the rules aren't being enforced about masks, whatever. And my, and I'm like, okay, we'll just leave, it doesn't matter. And, like, they go back and get our money back and complain about that stuff, and I'm like, this is the most embarrassing thing I've seen in my life, holy shit. And, like, ostensibly, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. But it freaks me out, it stresses me out, it makes me feel, like, embarrassed to be seen with them. I was like, no, I don't want that. Um, and for, so for a long time, I didn't really understand it until one day it started hitting me because when I was speaking at the conference, um, one of the people there said something along the lines of like, oh, I think Jacob is a very archetypal, um, American narcissist, which I was like, excuse me, Amer uh, archetypal American narcissist. I would not say that. Um, and that how she said, like people in Norway are going to be way more reserved, like way less gregarious, very like quiet and stuff like that. And that culture will apply to narcissism, make it uh, present in different ways, right? And I, th I got to think about this more when I was reading Wendy's book and she was talking about like a similar thing um, about like this bombastic entitled narcissist, right? And like she even thinks that entitlement is one of the more central features of narcissism. And I don't even think I really have entitlement. I think that's like the only symptom criteria I don't really fit. Um, and I was talking to Ruth, Dr. Ruth Harper about it. And she was like, we got to keep in mind that Wendy worked in Brooklyn and it clicked right there. She works, she worked in Brooklyn. So did Eleanor Greenberg. What kinds of narcissists, what kind of people there, right? Are there, right? Very uh, demanding, domineering, very rude. Like they act in ways that I would never even consider acting. And no offense to anybody from like Brooklyn or New York or what the fuck ever. But it's true, you guys have a different culture than I'm used to. A uh, culture way more in line with where like being a narcissist like that would be not acceptable, but way more normal than it would be where I live. Um, so I was talking to one of my narcissist friends about it, who's about, us, we're both live in the Midwest. And think about the things that get people, what's acceptable here, the things that get people like you. Politeness, like be like, cause I'm from Northeast Ohio, it's like politeness. Uh, being friendly and gregarious, um, stuff like that. Those are the acceptable things there, and those are the traits that I'm going to be playing out, that I'm going to be showing people, because that's how I'm going to get people to like me. And you, it really makes me wonder, I would love to see some examples of like foreign narcissists and stuff like that, because again, I mean, I know a lot of Europeans who watch my content, and I'm like, how would theirs be different? I mean, hell, and my friend um, from here uh, lacks, I'm not from here, but who's a narcissist who's also in the Midwest, also lacks the entitlement, right? And maybe the lack of entitlement isn't so much because of the pathology, but because of the culture. I have ne I have never, like, people saying, oh, my narcissist was entitled to my money. I'm like, fucking what? Maybe you got, maybe it's from a culture where sharing finance is a little bit more normalized, because I've never, no, God, no. Financial abuse, I think, is one of the worst types of abuse that there is. I find it detestable on so many levels. Um, but it really started to make me reconceptualize what I, I still think I'm pretty right about narcissism being just a self-esteem dysregulation disorder, right? Us trying to look powerful and smart and attractive because we need people to perceive us like that to stabilize our self-esteem and so we just so we know who we are. But that's going to be so different in every single culture. Um, I'm not sure. And like now I'm like, man, maybe maybe some of these people who I always doubted were narcissists, maybe they are. And I just couldn't recognize them because I'm used to my own presentation. Um, I think every narcissist run where I've lived, because I've met probably two from the Midwest. 
um, and I can be like, okay, yeah, they present exactly like aim. But then look at Cluster B Milkshake, Sarah, or look at um, Spirit Narc, Tess. Hugely different presentations, but it makes sense. They're from the West Coast, right? Sarah's a lot more, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, she's a lot more like in your face, kind of. Like not even with her narcissism, just like as a person, which Sarah, I'm not coming at you. It's not a bad thing. And Tess has her like whole celebrity thing going on. Uh, meanwhile, I am my trying to, I'm a polite uh, Midwesterner trying to aspire to be an East Coast academic. Uh, we have, we all have our like constructs, right? These personas that we want that are very, that are impacted by the culture. And I think maybe the culture plays way more into this pathology than I ever uh, expected to begin with. Because, uh, and now I'm kind of embarrassed because I'm like, man, I would, like some of these behaviors, I was like, a narcissist would never do that. Now I'm like, well, maybe they would just in different cultures where that was either more acceptable or they could get away with it easier or people wouldn't judge them as badly for it. Like, if I like went to a restaurant being like, I need your best table, people would be embarrassed to be seen with me. They'd be embarrassed to be around me. I would be, I'd be humiliating myself. Nobody respects that. Nobody likes that. I mean, hell, with the example I gave earlier, we, they were getting their money back. Um, and fuck, those people would get their money back at restaurants all the time too. It's like, the steak isn't done right. It's like, shut up and just eat your food. <laughs> I'm not friends with them anymore. I'm allowed to be mean. Um, but like, even my friends I was with, they were also embarrassed by behavior like that, right? That wasn't just a narcissist thing. That was just, like, I am... I am so embarrassed if I'm seen with anybody who I don't see as being polite. If they're like too loud, like I hate people being loud in public. I hate people who um, like get too much in your personal space. I don't know. People who it's very obvious you don't want to talk to when you're busy and they keep trying to talk to you. But I also think it's polite that if it's you're in like a situation, like you're standing in line, maybe say something nice. To the, well, not in line, but like saying something nice to the cashier, I usually do because that's polite. Um, and besides, they're fucking service workers. They need all the fucking positive affirmation they can get. Um, and now I'm like, I wonder, if, and I wonder if like in countries where like, um, and maybe that's why OCPD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, which is a disorder where a lot of their self-worth is based off of their performance at jobs, right? And they can be kind of arrogant, but usually it's justified because it's like they've been, they're constantly working. They're constantly working at their job, constantly trying to improve their craft. And maybe that's why in America, OCPD gets uh, confused with uh, NPD so often. Because it, the culture in America is very much work, work, work till you die. <laughs> right? Um, and so that can't, so the narcissistic like culture and the presentation can be impacted by that to make it look like their work ethic look very similar to OCPD. But the difference is that narcissists are going to be more concerned about the achievements and not the work themselves itself, right? People with OCPD, they're like, t like it could be summed up with take pride in your work. Like it's not that they're getting recognition, not that they're being respected for it. It's that they are doing the best at their work, the best that they can. Their work has to be perfect. At least that's how I understand it. Um, and, or with, um, I'm trying to think maybe, I'm trying to think why it would get confused with paranoid personality disorder too. I'm not sure if there's going to be a cultural phenomenon behind that. I think that's more just misconceptions on what pathological narcissism looks like. Um, but it's hard to say. This has opened up a very big route of thinking for me because I have, because like now I'm like, fuck. It's not, not just is it like a spectrum, not only is it not categorical, but there's a spectrum of cultures along with the spectrum of uh, pervasiveness and severity. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. I need to like categorize different types of narcissists now based on culture. I need to redo my chart entirely. But okay, that's just all I have to say though. Take your fucking meds, please.